Yes. I'm sitting here with Miten, David Pramal, and Minouche, and they're traveling through Europe, giving concerts almost every night. They've just had a few days resting here in Cologne, and somehow when you play together, just these few minutes, it already in a way answers the question, you know, because uh, immediately sitting here, I feel it's not just music that you're offering. So almost immediately, there's a beautiful connection happening with the three of you. And immediately, I'm touched from that. So even I'm not particularly listening to the words, the atmosphere you create almost within seconds, for me, is that something. And so it's a very... Um, Opportune, opportune, very opportune moment to talk to you for this project, Blueprints for Awakening. Um, so as you travel through Europe and you make these concerts, do you deliberately, uh, if you like, over the years of, of singing and making your concerts, do you deliberately, in fact, offer satsang? Or has it just evolved naturally somehow? I think it's also a definition of what satsang is, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, the first time I heard of the word satsang was with Osho when he went into silence in 81. And there was communion with the master. And it was a certain format of a meditation of one hour. You know, that's the first time I heard that word in... And so that was so deep for me, this is satsang, that I was surprised when suddenly satsang was answering questions and, and uh, you know, I didn't, that's just, you know, satsang is silence and it's music and it's, you know. Mm. <clears throat> now satsang, the, the translation is meeting in truth or communion in truth and that's definitely what it feels like for me. What, what we are sharing. Right. But um, 
What part? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I can feel immediately. You know? I never thought to even ask you to bring your guitar because I was planning to ask you a question. <laughs> immediately, there's that sound happening with you. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, you're very familiar now, I guess. You've been traveling for 16 years. 16 wow. years, yeah. You know, the music, the reason I wanted to play something is because that's the only way we can express it. You know, it's because it, you know, and we all know it's beyond words, whatever it is, this, this experience. So we continually try and somehow frame it in some way because that's our nature. Or, but the only way for us to, to be able to do it, and of course other people have found other ways and can express it through words. And, but for us, it's, it, 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 it is, it, it, the music is pure because it, it was actually conceived and born within the realm of a spiritual enlightened master. It wasn't something we brought to the Master. It wasn't something that we thought up after the Master had left his body. It was actually born in that time. Like I'd stopped, my, my journey in this was that I'd actually stopped thinking of myself as a musician when I came to Osho. I sold all my instruments, that was my job. And the, I, the last thing I wanted to be was a musician. So I actually stopped completely identifying as I didn't want to be a musician anymore, you know. <laughs> I wanted to be free. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I didn't ever expect to play, want to play music again. I was so enthralled and enriched, you know, by the music that I was hearing in the ashram that was coming at me, you know, it was like, I don't, I, I, this is all I need. And, and um, so it was, it was, my journey was that it came back to me through through gratitude of being with the master you know I just wanted to say thank you and mm -hmm. and so the guitar and that was a way I could say thank you and so I started and it came back then I started to play again in Deva's case she 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 came to me we were we were hanging out as as friends and uh, she started to sing and uh you know, in that whole journey, we've become, we, we, we were first lovers, we were first lovers. And, uh, and then her journey began also in the ashram, began singing again. She was taught as a teenager, as a young girl, but she dropped it as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So the music just came out of, out of this gathering, this whole connection. And, uh, and it never, it's still that. It's nothing, we can't do anything else. We never try to shine it up or do anything other than... Um, Be a kind of medium. Maybe. Yeah, so it's, we feel like through. messengers. We right. feel like we're kind of messengers. I don't, you know, that, that's where I feel comfortable with this stuff. Come through us and, uh, and it, it's recognized and it's also... Uh, when people come, they bring it too, right. you know? Right. So without knowing it, they bring it somehow. They, the love is palpable. What's that word? Palpable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was actually going to ask you about this love because it seems to me what you just said, you know, it started with a personal connection yeah. in love and then it developed into a connection through the master, also in love. Yeah. And now, in fact, it's changed in the sense that now you're sharing, I feel, as a master's in your own time, you know, you call it mess being a messenger. But I mean, it's steps, yeah, and it's it's a flow, and it just happens, I think. Yeah, I, I feel myself more like a, a facilitator, you know, like it feels like we all have that um, urge and need and love to come together and be together and sing together and, and be in silence together, but you need somebody to make it happen, you know, you need some, you need some catalyst. Yeah, so that's what mm. I feel like, you know, like we're just we're somebody who can, who mm. can provide that space that we can all be together. You right. Know? Right. And that's a very relaxed feeling for me, you know, when I, 
<laughs> That's good. <laughs> I feel good with that. Well, we're free of, of yeah. performing. Yeah. Right. You know, mm. then the love can come through. The love that is there, then the love comes through because there's no nothing in the way of it. Right. You know. Right. Um, you're singing mantras. Can you tell us what a mantra is? <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> He's English. He's a mantra. <laughs> 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 I mean, a, a mantra is like a magic formula that's made up of sounds, Sanskrit sounds usually, and they're very specific in their effect on, on our energy system and our body. Like scientifically, you know, every sound in the Sanskrit alphabet is related to one petal on our chakras, you know. So there's 50 sounds, there's 50 petals on the chakra. So, so we put these sounds are put together in a very specific way so that we are affected in a very specific way. That's why there's all these different mantras for different, different um, situations in life and different focus. You know, we want to focus on love or we want to focus on awareness or Shiva, you know, consciousness or Krishna, sweetness, love, devotion or Ganesh removing obstacles. They're all like um, like the mantras and the form of Ganesh or Krishna. They are like a reflection of that energy to help us connect with that more easily. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, we can try to find some translation for the mantra, but it will always fall short. Right. It's right. a bit like when we say we talk, but some other music can maybe express it more purely than, than the, the, the words, which always, you know, will just touch it ab right. just about, you know. Am I right in thinking that you had a special connection with the Gayantri mantra, that as a little girl, yeah, yeah, just you that, were singing it? Yeah, like... Um, like my father, he, he started singing it to me while my mother was pregnant with me, so it was kind of their way of welcoming me. Right. right. And then, and then at my birth, and then as a as a good night song every night as a child. Right. So right. that's my. It's and when you sing it now in concert, is it particularly powerful for you? It it feels like part of me or something. It's it feels like it's me or something. Right. It's, uh, I just feel at home, you know, but I feel at home with all the mantras and in, right. in that way. Mm. But there is something special mm. about the guy that mm. sings, isn't it? We play, of all the mantras, we played that, you know, like for the last 10, 12 years, I guess, every, almost every, every day. <laughs> and whenever we play concerts, that's one we never leave out. Right. Right. And it's always fresh. The thing with the mantras are always fresh. Right. It's a funny thing. It's not like you sing a song and then after a while you want to change it because you're fed up with the words or something. The mantras, they're alive. It's like opening a box and out they come when you play them, like the one we just played. They, they just live. Right. They're present and, they're, and, and it's, uh, it's an amazing thing to, to, to feel that, to sing the same thing every night and it's always new for all three of us. Right, right. It's also amazing that the Western audiences have taken up with Indian mantras and are singing along with you, I think, most nights. Yeah? We just sang in the Grace Cathedral, in not Grace Cathedral, Wells Cathedral, you know, in Wells? Yeah, in, yeah, England. in England, yeah. You know, that ancient, we, like that ancient, ancient old Christian, you know, an amazing old Beautiful cathedral, cathedral like yeah. And and there we there we are with a thousand people all singing mantras in this in this cathedral and and it, uh, yeah yeah the Western people there's something you know I was wondering what is it is it that the Christianity somehow has not answered these people's needs because here we are singing a totally different thing and we're welcomed by the Christian community. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the, the ministers were there and, you know, but there we were strangely singing Hari Om, Shiva Om, you know, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and they're perfectly right, you know. 
<laughs> it might be rather fun to add one of those old Christian hymns in sometime and see well, what we happens. Do, we've got Hallelujah, you know, there's so oh, much that's... magnificence near the ocean. Yeah. Hallelujah. And in a way. Hallelujah. Well, it's kind of. <laughs> it's on the, you know, it's on the cusp. <laughs> Because I think it's even, it feels to me it's even beyond the mantra or beyond hymns mm. or Hebrew. I mean, it's, 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 it's something, as you say, you can't talk about. And one way of, of coming to it is sitting and talking about truth. And another way of coming to it is, is singing. Yeah? Yeah. And it just, it's just an energy that moves between you guys as the focus and whoever's there. Mm. And something happens together. You know? yes. It's like a communing, communing together. Yes. But the, the the mantras they really talk to some deep. It really feels like we all know that language somehow. You know, like because so many times we get mess mails from people who hear a mantra in a shop or something, have no idea what they are listening to, and are deeply affected, you know, and then, so it's, they, they, it seems to be this universal sound language that we all relate to, no matter how, how connected we are to India or, you know, mm. or the mind. But what, <laughs> what I perceive also in your concerts is what Miten, you were saying perhaps a few minutes ago, that there's also a certain space you create because you kind of stop, you yeah? Yeah. And in this stopping, in a way, I guess the first time you did it, it might have felt a bit dangerous, I don't know, but you like you stop, and then something happens very spontaneous in this silence that's there. Yeah. And I felt that a few times in your concerts, that like it's a magic because you don't know really what will happen. It's not the same as, as singing because, as you say, you, you have some sense of the mm. effect of a mantra. But with this space, which you seem from, to me to be very courageous to create, yeah, where you just kind of stop. And then it's very familiar, usually, between you. And that touches everybody immediately. Mm. And it's like it draws them to you. But that's what I mean. That's, that's, we, couldn't have, we couldn't have figured out a way to perform that. You know, it, it, it is just... And that's, you know, because it came out of the ashram, because it came out of that experience with Osho, it's, it's, there's nothing else but that. So it's not that we try and do it or anything. And it, it's, it's just, uh, it's just a natural thing that, that, and, and what I feel, what I see happening is that as the world speeds up and as every and as all the information and the, everything comes more and more intense it's it's rare for people including myself to stop you know and uh, the concerts are a, a, an evening of of stoppage <laughs> Yeah, but that's <laughs> kind of very courageous. Yeah, it's very courageous. Yeah, but you know that's what I mean. It, it would be courageous if we tried, if we actually felt that we'd we were daring uh, we'd something. done something yeah. to you know. Mm. But the fact that we we it would be more courageous for us to try and perform, to go and say, okay, now you do that, and I'll do this, and then we'll sing this song, and then you, Manoj, you do. If we, you know, that. To me, would be more courageous than hanging out and saying, "What shall we sing?" You know, <laughs> what do you want to hear? You know, and because then, then the energy there's a flow. You know, and uh, and that's what makes it comfortable. When you, when you started, you're saying how you had this very strong connection, both of you, with Osho, and now I know you've been traveling in the world for for these many years. Have you now got a connection with other masters? Do you do you feel yourselves messengers for other masters? Personally, no, no, no. You can only have one master. You just when you you know when that happens, there's, you know, yeah. I've 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 have sat with a few other uh, masters, and uh, I can say that, uh, you know, it's it's they've all enriched my life, no doubt, you know. Right. But there's only one master. Right. There's only one master. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's very clear because I think you've been hanging out with the Dalai Lama. 
No, no, uh, no. We just had a that. private, you know, one time with that. But um, for me, it, I just used to be much more insular, you know. I used to only be going in the ashram. I only have friends who are Osho Sanyasins. And so, so now I, that's gone totally and that I don't make those distinctions anymore, you know, between non-sannyasins and sannyasins, how it used to be like, I don't know, 15 years ago. Or, right, yeah. And in that way, I feel, I feel more, much more, in, I feel totally inclusive now of, of all the different paths and gurus and, you know, and that's a really beautiful feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you recorded last year for the Golden City, you, you recorded this Mula mantra. Yeah. Uh, because I, re I mean, the Mula Mantra, the, the meaning of it is so beautiful and so universal, the way it honors, you know, the divine as first as the, the unmanifest and the divine as the spiritual teacher, the guru, the divine in every one of us, the male energy and the female energy. I mean, it's just such a beautiful whole, <laughs> you know, <laughs> celebration. Yeah. Do you want to mm. get your band Suri? Let's think. Let's play it. Can we play it? Sure. Yeah. That would be nice. If yeah, yeah. Mula Mantra. I haven't played that for so long. Oh really? Yeah. Because I came there just after you'd been there, and the, oh, yeah, yeah. there was kind of you know, there was some Osho people there, but oh, also yeah. people from other traditions yeah. there. And yeah, yeah. Then you had played your mantra. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, oh. Ah. Hari 
It's like rubbing a, it's like rubbing a, one of those genie things, you know, and then it comes <laughs> out. Yeah, the yeah, just they just come out. <laughs> so there's a fundamental question: Who am I? Who are you? Who is asking? <laughs> you give us a clue. <laughs> I mean, I have all the, I, I, I have all the spiritually correct answers to that question, <laughs> and now I don't anymore bother with the answer, and it feels really good, a good feeling, you know. It's uh, because it's just the happiness of this moment, and you know, and uh, also that uh, that barrier of oh, this is enlightenment, and this is before enlightenment, this is after is also gone, which is also a very relaxing feeling, you know. Now I don't. It's just the way it is now. It's, that's it. Mm. And uh, and then also the you know this this the misery misery is lived sometimes too. I mean it's very rare, but you know or the split split feeling inside or the struggle or the you know and that's that's not so comfortable, but it's in there too. And it was a really big let go when I, actually it was me 10 who helped me with that, you know, just the, that feeling of, wow, I don't have to make that separation of enlightenment, you know, and, yeah. Do you have a sense then what enlightenment is? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know, I, uh, I actually had a, an experience of really feeling it. I felt all the things that Osho always said how it would be, you know. <laughs> and and uh, that was in the Golden City. It was a very strong feeling. It was a. It was actually the transformation of an intense feeling of anger, like extreme anger, and just being with it and not doing anything about it, and then suddenly. Pretty very very quickly actually it, it, it transformed into blissfulness you know and then to feel that feeling of uh, every feeling is part of that bliss and that's really every feeling so exactly that 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 state I was in I don't feel now every moment I have not felt again since that time but I I know I've experienced it, which is I'm very grateful for, and still I've also kind of I don't really look for it now. I mean I don't feel it. I try to recreate it. Or I'm basically just really happy, you know. I'm just really <laughs> <What's wrong with laughs> just happy. All the time. <laughs> One of the worst things you could possibly say. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. <laughs> well, as long as I do what she tells me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you do it all the time. <laughs> 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 mm. 
Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't. I was trying to. I was trying to think. What am I going to say? And I have no idea what to say. I have no idea. What to say. <laughs> Let me ask you the same question. <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, you there's know, a I, fundamental question. Yeah. Who? Who? Who am I? Yeah. Who are you? God, I, I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I really don't know. It's uh, I I feel like uh, a happening. You feel like a happening. Yeah, <laughs> a happening. That's what it feels. I feel like I'm a happening. <laughs> like an event or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like an event. <laughs> so you're not. Can you I get tickets to that? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't care too much about enlightenment either, I think. I mean, you said that when you first came to Osho, you were even ready to give up your music. No, I wasn't ready. I wasn't. No, I wasn't even ready. I wanted to. I was looking for a way to. To. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, oh, enlightenment. I think. Deva pretty much. She she really articulated very sweetly, didn't she? I, I I mean, I I did I did. I mean, um, I think I've become. Life has become easier, <coughs> for for whatever reason. Uh, to a point where, you know, I, I like to, I wake up in the morning, I like to exercise, I like to exercise, you know, and, uh, and I like to take the day as it comes, you know, and uh, we, we have schedules and we have commitments, but I'm not, I don't concern myself with them. David does, you know. She does. She's amazing. And Mano's here. The so, question is who are you? No, but this is <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> yes. I'm trying to I'm trying to get out of it, you know. No, no but, but but I was actually, you know, I was moving in that direction, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm just, uh, you know. Things happen, and I'm part of that happening, and uh, that's what happens. And it will happen until I stop happening on this physical body, and then something else will happen. I don't know. I don't know. I just. Uh, I, I think do. we just failed the test here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. I think. I think that um, you see. What's really interesting for me in trying to come into an understanding with you is that you actually express all this in another language, which, in fact, I'm not a musician, so actually I'm not so a party to your language. My language is words and yeah. silence. Yeah. Your language is music and silence, so yeah. we yeah. can meet in the silence. Yes. And then it's easy, because as soon as you play, Green cake that we might have found in a little cottage in, uh, you know, in England somewhere. Sugar free. <laughs> Real strawberries. <laughs> Organic. Organic. Would you like to say something about destiny? Because it seems to me that if I was thinking of an example of some people who've come together, in fact, here I can include three of you, because it feels to me like maybe in the last year or two it's become three, that it's happened in a very much of a destiny way. I don't think you planned it. I don't think from what you've been saying you planned very much. You have to have a schedule, but basically it's happening, as you say. So would you say something about destiny? 
I think this this I, I can only it feels like something this was meant to happen that that that's that gives me an understanding somehow a confirmation of Ramesh's understanding of life you know like this is this is not an accident you know and uh, when I trace it back it's it's been you can see it from from the time we met and and, and the way Manoz appeared like an angel into this, and uh, uh, and the way I feel Osho just gave us a job, you know, and uh, it, it's a job that needed doing, and uh, we were somehow chosen, and and what we do is we do everything we possibly can to cherish it and nourish it. And we and and share it. Beyond that, there's nothing much we can do. You know, we're not great musicians. I'm not a great musician for sure. Deva's got a gift. She has a gift. Manoz is is the more of all the three of us. Manoz is a technical, uh, a very accomplished musician, but we're not. And uh, so it's, you know, like all we can do is just give whatever it is we, we feel we have to give. A hundred percent total. That's why we wanted to meet you. We, we, we in some ways, I really wanted to meet you. We really wanted to hang out with you like this. So, but in another way, I was like, I could have easily gone, look, we've got two hours. Let's give ourselves a break. But it feels like the the... The point of this is to be give it 24/7, however we can, not to the point of exhaustion, but this gener regenerates us. You know, it it, it gives us juice for the next trip, road journey to Amsterdam. You know, and so, so yeah, that's 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 how it is. It definitely is. You really feel this destiny. I, I feel it. I'm doubted. I, I, I mean, the whole thing is just, and it's really, yeah. it's interesting because there's always this thing of the secret, you know, the manifesting and the attracting of the right thing and everything. Mm -hmm. And in, in some ways, in some ways I must have attracted it also because um, I just read a letter that I wrote when I was 18 and I wrote, oh, there are these musicians in Pune and I would love to be musician and and uh, and travel around and be in this sense of community and you know like I was really spelling out my life you know and when I left school I thought oh, I would like to meet a guy I can work with and travel with I had nothing to do with music but I just kind of like those that I could be really always together with a guy you know? <laughs> and and <laughs> and but I I was never I never did it was always just a passing thought you know it wasn't like Oh, I must visualize it and, and and carry it and feel that feeling and whatever. So I, it was just in hindsight, I see how I actually had that thought, but it wasn't, you know, occupying me like that. And I, I wouldn't have imagined it like that. And then my nose comes along. I mean, like to have to find, you know, we were so long, just the two of us, and we couldn't really imagine a third person. How how would that work? You know, how would we do that, you know? And then I couldn't have made up a nose in my mind if I'd wanted to, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just amazing how perfect it is, you know? Right. And how did you, how did you meet Manoj with them? Uh, I met them in San Francisco, and they're recording an album called Embrace. Right. Uh, and a uh, friend of mine, uh, who I was in the States, I think I moved there about about three years ago then, and uh, I was playing with, you know, I'm sure you have heard Jay Uttal, and right. I was playing with the, the Ali Akbar Khan school there, and I was basically trying out many things. And through Jay Uttal, I believe they recommended me to have me in their CD. I clearly remember the first smile I was into into the studio. And it's beautiful, people looking at me. <laughs> and that was it, you know, the start, the 
meeting was still in my you um, met in a smile yeah, and <laughs> felt felt the spark then you know, <laughs> and i was i was uh, so touched by their music and uh, i mean I, obviously i had this you know fire into me which i had you know i was um i was in the rock music scene jazz music scene and just that feeling of going to america and make it something big happen that rush inside me uh, meeting there when we can made my uh, made me uh, make me find the true true longing that I have been looking for. Mm-hmm. So I feel very uh, fortunate to have you guys mm-hmm. in my life. That's great. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and from being uh, attracted to being a, a rock star, I mean. Do you find these mantras also have touched you and changed you in the last few years? Yes, definitely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I grew up in, I mean, I, 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 when I was a kid, there was a kirtan and a satsang in my house every day. You know, right. Right. Was, I was just not aware of. And I grew up in one of the major part of, uh, major space where the Buddhism is going on, Bodhanath and Pasvatinath, it's all happening there. It's close, but, the, you know, it's close the, to Kathmandu. Yes, it's in Kathmandu. And right. uh, for me, it's like uh, coming back to mantras and just you know, repetition of same word and same mantra. It's like a practicing a note that I have. I practice all this saragama for hours, the same mm-hmm. thing. And somehow I feel the you know, the feeling that I feel like I am getting to know all this mantra back again in a different way that I have never cared of before, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was there as a child, well, yes, the way I with Deva really, had also yes. as a child. And I didn't really thought of, you know, like what mantra is. And I don't know, I was chanting, but, you know, there was a, a priest in the house, but it just felt like all the regular thing that I met, <laughs> but coming here is like a <laughs> meeting back and I feel like, wow, mm. it's great. Yeah, something and, from deep inside yes, of you. Yes, and it really touches me back again and uh, it's going back home now and it's going to the temple and the priest chanting the mantras, the same mantras you yeah. guys sing. Mm. It's, I have a totally different vegan faith now. Oh. Yeah. You, you sing together somewhere in, in India, probably in Pune, do you sing? No, we haven't. Well, we never, oh, you haven't sang in Pune? Not in Pune, no. no not for, we've been, we left, we never went back there since the year 2000. Oh, really? We just never, never found the space to, well, I guess we will one day. Well, I was thinking it must be wonderful to play in Pune, oh, man. too, also. It would be great to take him to the ashram and have him play in the Samadhi. That's really one thing I'd like to give him. I'd love to do that. It's yeah. an incredible yeah. sound in there. It would be great to him and Ajahn Samadhi. One day we'll make it. Also in Kathmandu. But it's funny you're talking about destiny and the mantras and everything, and uh, I'm thinking also of Deva's dad, you know? Like, uh, sometimes I, I, I think to myself that, you know, this has got a lot to do with him too, this spreading of love all over the world, his daughter doing that, because, you know, he was... Uh, he was in the Nazi thing, you know. He was a young, reluctant guy who was 14 or 15 in the Nazi youth, you know, and uh, got had to do the whole trip and couldn't get out of it, and somehow, you know, ended up in a in a coal mine in Yugoslavia for like five years, and uh, and uh, and you know, in his own way, reaching out, you know, like he would. He would, he, he, he would do things like uh, pay with his bread that he was given for food. Uh, he would pay to hear Yugoslavian words. He wanted to learn the Yugoslavian language. And that's the kind of, it was again, kind of reaching out. And uh, he, uh, he was an artist, really, really special artist. And... Uh, and somehow it, 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 it often touches me, and I, I think of, of, of Wolfgang, you know, and you and his daughter, and, your, and, and somehow through him, he's been able to heal a lot of 
a lot of what happened without it, without him being here, you know. But somehow that that that's also a part of this whole magical event that's happening happening. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think happening is the word. Yes, it's like destiny happening through you. Yeah, and you're very modest actually, so you see yourself as messenger. Yeah, it's happening. It, it it it's it's not dead. Wolfgang's not dead. You know, Osho's not dead. You know, it's 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 all there. It's all here. You know. Although David was quite happy when he used to go go off to have a few months on his own in Greece or something. Paint. He was. She was happy to get him out of the house. <laughs> he was a very strong disciplinarian. You know. Oh yeah, with his with Gary. his kids, <laughs> you know. mm. but very very full of fun too. He's a, he's a mm. really special man. Yeah. Did I get you talking about destiny? I can't quite remember. Yeah, you did. I did. You watch it on the video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, it's clear that both of you have Osho in your heart as as the master. Yeah. Would you say something about a master? What is exactly is a master? It's like a, you know, like a, an inspiration and a, it just feels good. I think for as a human, it feels good to be able to direct the love to a certain point, you know? It's easier somehow. And for me, I was really interesting when I felt that, that I had directed my love to the divine, to this one dot, Osho, you know, and and I realized that that uh, even physically I could feel that it's in front of me and not behind me, you know, that's how my love was going like this, you know, and, uh, and, then, and then I made that bigger so that I could feel it all around and 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 so it's Osho is that flavor that suits me the most, you know, of of the divine or the of of the realized being or the of consciousness or it's just like everyone has their own taste, you know, of what what they like and what they relate to and what makes them feel at home. And for me, that's that's Osho flavor and. That I can feel all all around, and it's also yeah, it's like a, from for me it was also to to let go of that uh, that physical also that that form. It took me a while to realize that this is one form. It's not the form, you know. Like this is not how it has to look, you know, because that. That for me was a bit of a trap I was in for a while. That I thought enlightenment has to look exactly like that. It has to be graceful. It has to be beautiful. It has to be intelligent. It has to be um, so vast, you know, like this genius guy, you know. And and then you feel like oh, I never, I never be like that, you know. And and then realizing, yeah, that's. That's the form of that consciousness took in this being, but it might take another form in another being, and it's not less consciousness, it's just another flavor of ice cream, you know, it's like another. And uh, I still love Osho the best, you know, it's just, it's just so beautiful, you know, it's just a feast for all the senses to see him and to, to uh, hear him and to laugh with him and to, to and be probably him. you yeah. can sense as you speak you know that probably a lot of people say exactly that about you can you accept that i get those all those words you see projections i get yeah, yeah. but i know better <laughs> 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 but i think that's the thing with amas and i think that's a, a it's a point is that osho wasn't what we projected either but he he helped us like it was like the when you pro, you know you project your love and then you actually find there's nothing there, 
you know, and 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 uh, and, and uh, Osho's way of knowing better was that he also knew better. You know, he he was it, masters like a window. That's how I see it. You know, and uh, you just you just you know, and and uh, and somehow there's a seduction involved. You know, there's a kind of a a, a seduction and um, and. Uh, until you realize the further you go towards that thing that's calling you, it's the closer you go to yourself, actually. And, you, and when you actually completely dissolve into the meeting of that thing that you've been being seduced to come close to, there's nothing other than who this moment, you know. And I think that so shows that was any master's job. Once that happens, job is over. You know his job is done, and uh, as a as a human, and uh, uh, he, you know, and 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 so, you know, the projection is uh, in in the case of Deva, I see it, you know, and 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 me to a certain degree, but of course a lot less. But the fact is that the projection is healthy; it's it's a feeling of love, and if Deva stays true to that thing of I know better. There's nobody there in the end. People will find there's nobody there but themselves feeling love. You know, and it doesn't have to, David doesn't. I watched her, you know, because she was like, a, she was a very shy young girl and who wouldn't sing or wouldn't open her mouth and sing in a sound check because she wouldn't want to sing alone. She's okay singing with me. So I've watched this journey where people have, of, of projected so much on her and it's beautiful and you know from my vantage point I've watched is she gracious with this how you know and I've just watched her be, graciously live this thing that she's been destined to live and it and you know the, the ego is it's been so so right that she never considers herself a musician because that musician's ego is not there. There's nothing there but, oh, you know, you think I'm that, but I know better. Right. You know, this and, is and, a very beautiful uh, answer because it's very easy to. Yes, yes. When Dave and me were just the two of us, when you know, when I was thinking, what, what am I going to bring in? I'm going to bring in maybe another string instrument or something. And what I'm not going to bring in is any wind. I don't want, you know, Deva is singing, that is her territory. You know, I don't want another wind instrument. That's the last thing. I want something that support. This is her, you know. And what do I get? I get a guy who just <laughs> makes, makes love together, you know, like they just like, uh, right. you know. Right. So, you know, they, again, you know, I, 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 I was going on a different way, you know, and then Manoj so said, no. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Ramesh has a has a book called Who Cares? <laughs> and in a way what you're both saying that I understand is yeah. it's a happening. Yeah. There's not anybody to care. Yeah. There's not anybody to be enlightened. No. And it's just happening. Yes. And if people project onto you both or onto you That's what, their problem. <laughs> what they That's what you might have projected yeah. twenty five yeah. years ago, yeah. it's a necessary projection for some time, yeah. I think. It's a heart opening. The heart is oh, being opened, yeah. you know, and that's that's what we all long for. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if, I mean, if we're the catalyst for that, we're okay to stand in front of that because we know better. <laughs> yeah, you know better, but also you've had, for you also, you had a time when you needed that projection. Mm. And tonight in Amsterdam, there'll mm. be some people mm. coming for the first time maybe mm. to this kind of uh, evening. Mm -hmm. And they'll be drawn to you from, in which you like, ordinary love. Mm -hmm. And that projection mm -hmm. feels absolutely right. Yeah. And yeah. then later, as they understand more, that projection naturally changes, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it seemed to me what you were saying about a master, that he stands there and says, come, and you come. And then just when you touch him, he's disappeared. Oh. And then there's the window or the door, yeah. and you step through that. Mm -hmm. Well, you that the moment of stepping through. That is the moment of stepping through. Up until that time, you're stepping towards the window. You just don't know it. But it's a step through, isn't it? Right. Right. And then... Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay.
could you say something about devotion to the master? Because what is coming out now very strongly is that in a way you're both inspired by devotion to the master. You call this master Osho, but in a way it's, it's something mm. I might say beyond Osho. And what's left is, is something we can call surrender, mm. devotion, trust, those kind of words. It's interesting because devotion, you can get stuck in, in being a great devotee too, you know? You know, and I, I do find sometimes I, I feel like, you know, I carry here, I carry a, a, in my little locket a, a hair of Osho, you know, and it's about the only, the only, you know, f I, I do, I love to see his face, you know, and, 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 uh, But uh, it's funny, isn't it? Because devotion somehow means uh, being devoted to a physical form. That's that when 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 not when, necessarily. No, I think you. I mean, I what I get from you both talking is that you're not devoted anymore to a physical form. You're just devoted. Yeah, but there is something about his face that that. You know, I, I I tell you, the last time I saw Osho physically, I watched him walk on, off the podium, and I re and I said to myself, without realizing, he was very ill. It was about two or three days before he left his body or something. And uh, I realized, you know, this thing of we were all f hanging on to his physicality so strongly, and uh, and 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 feeling like, wow, until you actually, till that's not there, we won't. Be able to make whatever, or, or I think I even felt the collective because I felt I think I was thinking we, we're still we'll suck on your breast until until you take it away, and uh, and then three days or so later he 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 was gone, and uh, and what remains. It, 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 you know, like I don't want to be sentimental about it. You know what I mean? I don't want to be sentimental about, oh, I miss his physical presence. I don't care. I never was physical that close to him anyway. But sometimes I think, oh, I'm going to have a little picture of him. I'm going to put him down by my monitor in the, in the, in the concert. But then it always, it's, it feels wrong. It feels silly, you know. So the, the, what what am I devoted to? I I am I am devoted. I know that. I feel it, and there's no question. But I don't. I I can't really separate the physical from the unphysical in a way. There's some part of me that bounces between loving to see his face, or so you know. It's interesting. You see what you're saying about this picture that it doesn't feel right to put his picture because, I, as I understand it, in Pune now they've taken his picture from. Also the true. Yeah. And I think the idea they had for that, as I understand, was exactly what you're saying in a way, that it becomes bigger than the form. So you're actually, you're devoted to the divine, and it's, it's, it has been called Osho, it has been called Ramana Mahashi, it's, there are many great masters, but it's just this divine. But at the same time, but at the same time, if you look at that picture of Ramana, it emanates, if you look at a picture of Osho, it, there's an emanation happening, you know. Yeah, it just is, you know, that's, that's, that's a mantra right there, you know. Right, right. And, and uh, so... And in, and in fact, the beauty of the film particularly, because originally I got a sort of inner message to go and make this film. The, the thing that's beautiful about the film, and it's becoming in fact more popular than the book, is this incredible energy from all these masters. There's mm. about 25 masters on the film. And there they are. And just as you say, from the emanation of the, of the eyes, from the energy of, of the person, mm. there's something deep happening between the master and the, the yeah. devotee. Yeah, and to make that a rule that you mustn't look at that, which I think the ashram has made, is for me, I, it feels like... Uh, but main, maybe, you know, I don't know, I, I never tried to run an ashram, so I have no idea, but, you know, you've got to have certain direction, you know. But for me, I like to, if I want to see a picture, if I want to sing Osho's name, 
Nobody's going to tell me I can't sing my master's name anywhere. Nobody. And, and if I want to have a picture of my master, I want a picture of my master. That's, but, but beyond that, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 you know. But, you know, if I think of that man, um, uh, that, that's, that's a big, big, big feeling that this guy, guy, just a guy like you and me, knew, you know, you know, stood up and did what he did. That's also destiny. And I, I guess it's the same, you know. It's like he didn't have a choice either. He just dealt with it in his own way, you know. Because he, he, he liked... He liked controversy, you know, he liked the edge. He lived on the edge. He liked it out there. He would do anything to stir some shit, man. You know, he would <laughs> he would wouldn't he? Yeah. yeah. He liked it. He and liked and it. and then he liked what happened. He wasn't he he didn't care about what was going on. It was about what's being what's happening. How you know, what's being created now. So that guy, I'm like Wow! Thank you so much that you, you, you gave me this, and that love is the same love as being projected on Deva. It's like thank you so much that I can come and sing and feel this, you know. So there is a physicality to it, but at the same time, he's not there. But I find it very beautiful the way you're talking right now. You see, because my sense is that it that inside of Osho. I mean, we saw him standing on the marble, yeah, stepping out of a Rolls Royce with a beautiful clothes. We mm. saw all that. Mm. But I think inside, he was <laughs> probably very ordinary. Yeah. And things were happening step by step in his life. And it's actually happening to you. Mm. And you have to Us. deal with that, <laughs> that it's happening to you. you know. And mm. it's a different manifestation of the same mm. stuff. Mm. And I think this is somehow why I'm sitting here with you because it, it feels to me like it's happening and it's happening that you touch many people and how that works is partly to do with this devotion I think mm. and it must be something that has to touch you as you travel through the world mm. not just in the concerts I guess but mm. with people you meet out of the concerts and it must have been getting stronger over the last years I guess I mean, you know, Niten's a, you know, he's an English kind of... Geezer, go and say it. You know, he's an English <laughs> geezer, you know. Uh, his dad was running pubs, you know, so he can handle it. But, you know, you're a um, sort of delicate and very... Yeah, that's, what, that's total projection. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might not be delicate, but I mean, you certainly appear for me to be delicate. <laughs> She's very grounded. Yeah. She's very grounded. She's very, and she's very funny. She's very funny. She's not so delicate. Um, <laughs> no, anyway, that's, she's, that, uh, that's not one of your questions. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can talk about David from home for a while. <laughs> so maybe you tell me something about devotion. You know, because you talked about it earlier, actually. You were saying earlier that you'd come to some moment for yourself where, in a way, the form was less, perhaps, important mm. for you. I mean, really, if I'm really honest... <laughs> you have to be really honest. <laughs> I'm, first and foremost, totally devoted to me, <laughs> <laughs> It's true, it's true. <laughs> it's true. And, I mean, and he's my guru, you know, I, I, for me, Mitten's enlightened, you know, I mean, for me, the way he lives is my inspiration, and I'm totally <laughs> always blown away how he, how he lives his life, you know, like, it's, it's, and how he... That's the great thing about English geezers. Yes, <laughs> not all of them, no, I'm not sure. Because actually, he probably forgets, but I met you about three or four years ago. In the Rainbow Festival, I met you for like two minutes. Uh, you were practicing in a little room, uh, and I was coming there. I don't know exactly why. I can't remember. But anyway, we had a few words. Uh, and I immediately thought English. <laughs> 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 mm. So, and that feels. I mean, that I, I love 
service, you know. I just love helping or I love, uh, so, so, and through doing, I guess, you know. I mean, it just because it's, I, I'm, I'm very down to earth, you know, so, so <clears throat> that makes me feel good to, to, uh, to please in, in a beautiful way, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and like on a bigger level, then I, I'm, I like to do the best I can for the people who come. You know, that I try to answer their emails or I try to be there after the concert to meet them if they want to meet me or, you know, so I, that makes me happy. I don't know what that's got to do with devotion. I'll come back to that. Now. <laughs> and and the singing, that's, that for me, that's, that's, I always feel this feeling when, when, when I sing, it's th that feeling of, Thank you so much. You know, like I can't, I don't, I can't. I, it's too much to say. You know, and I can, I can sing that thank you, and it's, it's the best I can do to express it. And it's also a, a, a fill me up. You know, with, with you. You know, you. You know, so it's this, and I, I feel that's devotion. It's a, it's a, it's a. It's a circle, actually, you know. It's not just a one-way, you know, energy going, energy of love and, and acceptance. and, and um, But it's also an openness for that to come inside of me. And that's why I love, I love the mantras and the singing, because they are a bit of both, you know. And actually, you don't know, are you singing to Krishna to say, oh, you're so great, or are you singing, please, Krishna, you know, help me, and, and you know, it's, and the mantras don't tell you that word, you know, there's just, it's not really a sentence, <laughs> you know, like that, you know, so you can put into them how you, how you feel, you know, you can, you can, uh, they have, they carry both, you know, and that's devotion. <laughs> well, you said you were devoted to me. Can we talk about that? He's <laughs> 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 got it on tape now. <laughs> Do not erase that bit. That's the real <laughs> truth. <laughs> but I think you talk about each other a lot, even in the concerts, don't you? I mean, you have this kind of talk even in the middle of the concert. I think, this about is your relationship. About I mean, concerts are like. Are, are like getting in bed. Sink, They're just yeah. getting in bed with each other, and and and, uh, and then and then see what happens. Happens. <laughs> yeah. So I think I would like to ask you to play something that yeah feels right for you at this mm. moment. Mm. Probably I don't have any more questions. Mm. <clears throat> Unless there's something I missed to ask you, which you'd like to talk No, I about. think we've... You can see Oh. <clears throat> In the light of love, we are whole. In the light of love, we are whole. In the light of we heal and sing Thy will be done In the light of love
So that's who we are, that's destiny and that's devotion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.